Hi, my name is Melody and I'm here to answer some of your questions that you guys have asked from the past couple of months. Um, we're going to talk about my paintings and the upcoming projects. So, here we go! So, can you tell us a little bit about your influences? Um, influences in terms of artists that I like or something like that. Uh, I would say I really like people like David Mack. I really like Herb Leonard, I think that's how you say his name. Um, I really like Disney. I think Disney does some really amazing things with mood and color and tone and texture and character development. What would you say your first big inspiration was? Would you say it was singers, or was it something else? When I was younger, I, again, I really, really liked cartoons. <laughs> so that was, that's pretty easy. I actually, I was pretty lonely as a kid, so I guess my first inspiration was loneliness. Um, I used to draw little characters and cut them out and reinforce them with tape, and I used to, like, have them act out with adventures and stuff. And then they kind of grew, like, from these little cut out animals to like these bigger, bigger pieces. Um, and then when I, as I grew older, I, I started reading books and, and watching more cartoons. I mean, I mean, really more cartoons. Um, and I just started, I drew fan art before I knew what fan art was. It wasn't even called fan art. Back yeah, it wasn't then. fan art back then. I, when did that term come around? But anyway, it wasn't. It was like fan art before I knew what fan art was. So I drew all these characters from these books and these movies and stuff. And then the more and more I started listening to music as I got older, I started drawing singers and musicians and actors and things like that just because I liked what they did. And I was like, just like I liked the characters in the book, like these were real people. So it was just a little bit less creepy. <laughs> Most of your art seems to feature women as a subject matter. There's only seems to be one piece of a man. That's delicious. Why do you choose to use mostly women as your subject matter? That's a very good question. I feel like, in my mind, oh no, here's the, here's the straight jacket's coming. Um, I've surrounded myself with these women, with these mu with these musicians that are women. Um, I call them my goddess. Pantheon? Is that how you say that word? I should know this, but I don't. Um, and I feel really supported by their music. I feel really nurtured by their music. I mean, and they all have this same common theme that kind of overlaps through their music. Kate Bush, Tori Amos. Um, Emily Autumn, Vienna Tang, Joanna Newsom, Charlotte Martin, they all have these same themes. And not only are they very talented, not only do a lot of them like each other, but they all have a pretty good idea of what they're doing. And I like that a lot. I guess I'm just not com as comfortable painting men, I guess because their music doesn't speak to me as much as I would say that, that women artists speak to me. And I know that's different for everybody. I mean, it's not that I don't like male singers. I mean, I really like David Bowie, um, Sisters of Mercy, The Smiths, The Killers, but their music isn't, it's just not quite the same. Actually, the the painting that I did recently of Ch from Shay Toon's Hadley Frazier, their music really speaks to me in the same way that Tori Amos' music or Vienna Tang's music speak to me. Um, or speaks to me. I messed that up. <laughs> That's okay. Um, it's very... It's meaningful, I guess. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Can you tell us a little bit about your unusual use of color and the reasons that you pick certain people to paint. Hmm. This is really good. It's, it's like, 
It's it's tea. It's like liquid crack. What, what was it? What was it? It was like vanilla caramel something or other. And then I put like three teaspoons of sugar. I'm gonna be crazy in about ten seconds. Mmm. Okay. So when I listen to music, it's why I'm paying a lot of musicians. Not so much to get attention, but so much as when I listen to music, I get these surge of emotions. I, when I listen to it, I hear things differently, I guess, than other people, and I see colors, and I get this compunction to... Compunction is not the right word. Um, this compelling force in me to make what I see in my brain on... Um, on, on paper. Charlotte Barton talks a lot about um, painting with sound and I want to sing with paint. I want the paintings that I do of musicians to look like the song, like what I see in my head when I listen to their music. So I want someone to be able to look at this painting and be like, and listen to this song and be like, okay, so that, that this is what's going on. Um, a couple of examples. I'm gonna be Vanna White. Then, of course, I pick like a blank page. <laughs> so, when you have something like, yeah, I'll pull this up. Ophelia by Tori Amos. This is one of the ones that I'm doing for Rain for this batch of prints and, and donations. Um, Ophelia is a very sweet piece. It's a very delicate piece. It's very multi-layered, and it's kind of the arrangements are very symphonic. Um, actually, a lot of the references that are made in the song are very are made in the song are very <laughs> specific and actually very clever. Like it makes references to Saint Agnes and these poems and these themes that, that just run the gamut, and the song isn't so much a uh, Tory by numbers as some fans accuse it of being. It's very, very complex, and I wanted the painting for Ophelia to, to feel the same way. So you have the colors of the blues and the pinks kind of for the delicate riffs of the piano, but you also have the purples and the and and oh, my glasses. <laughs> the purples and the blacks for the darkness because there's a lot of darkness in that song as well. Whereas something like I'm just gonna throw that there. See, I'm so nice to these things. It's a wonder. Even... So let's take something like Language of God, which is also a very robust piece. It's very multi-layered. It has a lot of really gorgeous production. Not only is Charlotte Martin's vocals incredible, not only are her lyrics very, very, very specific, but she has a lot of things going on in this song. I mean, my god, there's a gong in this song. I love songs with gongs. It's like my favorite thing in the world. But <laughs> this painting has a lot going on. So this is, so you have the orange, the orange doves, and actually I don't know if you could see, but this actually kind of sparkles. Which doesn't always come across in things like when you scan it to put it on the computer, it doesn't always come across. But it's like, you know, if you don't have good headphones and there's like a little like, excuse me, whistle or something that you miss out on when you listen to the song. I mean, it's just, the little whistle adds just a little bit to it. Even if, so even if you can't see the sparkles, <laughs> they're there. I hope that I'm making sense and I'm not totally crazy. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> so, it had to do with your unusual use of color and the reasons that you pick certain people to paint. Okay, so I'm 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 still I'm still, still on, I'm still on track. Okay, um, the last one I'm going to use because everybody kept asking me about these ones. I guess because they were different and they weren't they weren't women and they weren't crazy because you know this come back here something like this something like language of god 
is very different from something. I'm just taking them out. I'm just throwing them. I'm so terrible. Something like this, which was, not only was it unusual, like, it wasn't some piano siren. It wasn't some quirky indie goddess. It was a West End stage actor, and it wasn't, the colors weren't crazy either. They were very realistic and specific, and... I think because a lot of Shea Tunes is the band that Hadley Frazier's in, so not only does he do like acting and stuff, but he's a really awesome musician and he writes this really beautiful music, really meaningful music. Actually, this one um, on Constellation Street sound, I have notes on the back of this, um, what to me in my mind reminds me a lot of Tori Amos's Pretty Good Year. And I did a painting for Pretty Good Year, so when I came to do on Constellation Street, I wanted to compose the painting the same way. It had to be done in a single sitting and had to be done sort of freehand and, and very loose because even though his it's bluegrass sort of, it's very crisp and it's very, very specific and it's very delicate. And so basically, I think I, I choose interesting colors because those are the colors that I see when I listen to music and I choose people to paint that make music that I like or they do something like that I like, like I like Christina Hendricks. Although Christina Hendricks sings, which I recently found out, so it's more of a reason to be in love with her other than the fact that she's amazing. You know, I've watched Mad Men for three years and I have no idea what it's about. I just like looking at Christina Hendricks. It's like, oh, Don Draper's messing up his family life again. Ah, oh, Betty's whining. Oh, Christina Hendricks is on the screen. I don't care what's going on. Um, so, yeah, we can get the brush. <laughs> the next question's pretty much identical to the last question, so we're going to skip it. <laughs> Unless you want to talk about all that stuff again. What was it? The, the next question is, what inspires the color palettes for your paintings? Brain problems. Um, <laughs> yeah, we we can we can skip this one. I'm crazy, and I failed color theory four times. Actually, no, it was three and a half times. The fourth time, I got dropped from the class. The teacher's like, I can't do this anymore. You really don't get this. But I can't do any other art classes unless I. She's like, I don't care. I can't even bother failing you. It breaks my heart to fail you again. I'm just gonna drop you from this class. I'm gonna erase this from your record. Yeah, it was that bad, but if that explains anything. If you could collaborate with any figure in history on an art piece, who would it be, whether it be them as subject or creating together? Hmm. I think I can never remember how to say her name, but she's one of my favorite artists. Ever. Her name is artist Mia Genetschetti. It's, 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 it's something that's Italian, but she did that really famous painting of that Judith biblical lady cutting off that other guy's head. But she, her art is amazing, and I'd love to do something with her. Or Caravaggio. He's another one of my same kind, same era, same photorealism before photorealism. Like these amazingly dark paintings with dark shadow that look like photographs before there were photographs. So I'd like to do something with them. If I could. They probably wouldn't. I mean, they can't even say their names right, so. <laughs> Not for you. And then... And then they had an alternative question, which was... Who would you collaborate as a fictional character with them either being the subject matter or creating together? Hmm. If I could collaborate with fictional characters. Oh no, this is opening up a whole can't worm. Um in terms of three? <laughs> Michelle's going three different fictional characters. Um, one of which is not Jean Valjean, thank you. Um <laughs> one <laughs> Um, fictional? Hmm. 
I don't know if I'd want to do art with any fictional... Maybe there was a character from The Lovely Bones. I think her name was Ruth. And she got in trouble a lot in school because she drew these very curvaceous naked ladies. Um, uh, maybe, maybe her... Uh, she's actually the only fictional artist I can think of, but I remember liking her character in Lovely Bones a lot. Um, does wanting to have tea with fictional characters count, or is that... The, sure. Um, hmm. I'll have to come back to that one, because there's so many. Maybe Gavroche. Maybe. He'd probably get us kicked out wherever we went, but... <laughs> she's just laughing at me. Okay. I'm going to break up this next question because there's a lot of questions in it. <laughs> what do you use for portrait references? Pictures? Um, it depends on if it's something that's based on a photograph or based on a video still or something or if it's based on something from my head. I'm really bad at... I'm really... I like drawing things where I can, from a picture, I have a really hard time drawing things from my head. I'm not so good at that, actually. So in terms of references for portraits, I like doing things from photographs that already exist. And that's another thing, too, is when you're using a video still or something, or you're using your own photograph, or you're using somebody else's photograph, it becomes something totally different. It's like you're taking something that already exists and moving it and creating something else with it. Can you tell us a little bit about how you go about making pencil sketches? Hmm. Pencil sketches are very, very crazy. If it's something that I know is going to be a painting, I have to tone it down. But if it, sometimes I'll get an idea and I'll scribble it out on like a napkin or something or like a piece of binder paper and then I have a light animated animator's light box that they use for animation and I'll sketch it or I'll trace it from the really ugly, really messy, covered in notes napkin or something and I'll put it on a real piece of watercolor paper Sometimes what I do is I'll print out something and then I'll measure it to make sure that it's the same same size because I'm kind of a perfectionist. I don't use gridding though. That's that's a little that's a little too complicated. This reminds me of those things in coloring books. They have those those grid things. You put them together and you draw them out and then turn them into Santa Claus or something. <laughs> Okay, we have one final question. Oh no. How is it that you are so awesome? <laughs> what do I want to bet that last one's in all caps, isn't it? It is. <laughs> um, I actually don't think I'm that awesome. I think I get a little bit... Oh, Michelle's giving me that look. I think you guys are awesome. I think a lot of my friends are awesome. Um... I actually get a lot of letters and emails from people. Some of them I know, some of them I don't know. And they thank me. They're like, or they'll, or it'll just be, they'll be like, I have a question. I'll be like, okay, what's your question? It'll be more like a series of statements that are kind of excitable and have question marks at the end of them, I guess. Um, I, my art, people really respond to it, and I, I'm not quite sure why. Um, as far as, or they, or I get a lot of emails and stuff, like, thanking me for what I do, whatever it is that I do, or some people have told me, you know, because you're very open about things that you've been through and your brain problems and other, and other things, like, you make me feel like I can, I can do anything, I'm like, oh, thank you, and I guess being awesome, if you want to call me awesome, um, I've just learned to like myself, I guess, you know. You spend a lot of time with yourself, and I think that you should just enjoy yourself. I think that's part of being awesome, is just being comfortable with who you are. I mean, again, you spend a lot of time with yourself. You should 
just be comfortable. I don't know why that sounds so terrible. Because it's hard to talk about being awesome. No, I mean, like, you know, you spend a lot of time with yourself. I'm like, why is my brain taken right there? Oh, God. <laughs> it's like those bus advertisements. Have you seen those? They're like the side of the bus, and it has, like, the empty bus, and it has, like, or the empty train or the mall or something. It's like, you can do it on the bus. You can do it on the train. You can do it in the mall. And it's like red letters. And it's like, what are they talking about? You know? <laughs> what is this an advertisement for? I don't understand. You know, your, your brain goes right there, right to the bad, right to the middle school 12-year-old boy locker room mentality. Oh, God. Anybody watching this is going to be like, well, this is prime idiot time, TV. Okay. So, was there anything that you didn't get asked that you want to talk about? Hmm. Oh, I can talk about um, the upcoming Umbrella Project. Um, a couple years ago, actually in 2008, I emailed rain.org and I asked if I could do something with them. And it was kind of like, I really wanted to work on comic book tattoo. That was my big thing I wanted to do, and then I realized that comic book tattoo was not about drawing cartoons of Tori Amos. It was about doing comic books based on her song catalog, which is still really awesome, but it wasn't, excuse me, quite the same thing. So I'm like, I have all these drawings now of Tori Amos that I was going to show them. Oh, do something for Rain. Let's do that instead. So I, I emailed Chelsea, who has been nothing but wonderful. Um... And I started this this huge process because all of the all of the paintings had to be based on songs. They all had to again embody the song that they were based on. They all all of the songs had to mean something to me. I knew I couldn't just paint Toriamos and just call it be like ta da, here's Toriamos. It had to be. Her, I've been a fan for a million years. I had to do something based on her work based on songs that meant something to me and have this so it was a giant undertaking. I worked on it from summer 2008 all the way to March of 2009 and then I started you know, I made all the prints myself everything was hand signed, everything was printed out and cropped everything. Did Basically all the prints were done by hand. Everything that I did for this project was done by hand and I donated um, Three, three original, three original pieces. Um, so th then, summer of two thousand nine, I met Tori Amos and I gave her one of the prints, and she thanked me, and that was really, that, you know, I came there to thank her, and she thanked me instead, and that really humbled me in a way, and I was really like choked up and like, oh, thanks, Tori. But then I started again. I started again, um, summer two thousand nine. I only did one painting, really, and then January of last year, I did another, and I didn't work on it at all. So there was none, I don't think, for 2010, and now it's 2011, and most of them like, I gotta do this. I gotta, I said I was gonna do this once a year, Michelle's doing the you can do it dance. Um, I'm like, I need to do this again. I can't, I can't cop out. I can't say that I'm going to do something annually and then not do it. So I decided, you know, last time I did 150 prints. I did five prints. So divide that by 150, I guess. I'm really terrible at math. And then I had the three original paintings. I had to do something bigger this time around. So I contacted a few people and I sent out a few emails and actually this time around we're going to be working with Vienna Tang as well as Tori Amos and hopefully a couple other people who haven't confirmed yet. So if you're watching this, I sent you an email. But um, I, last time it was called the Watercolor Stain Collection based on the Father Lucifer lyric says he reckons I'm a watercolor stain. I'm like, well, that's perfect. You know, these are... I actually, that's one of the techniques that I use 
in watercoloring is staining. I guess that's what it's called. It's one of the few things, apparently the way I watercolor is wrong. That's what all my teachers have told me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ta-da! Oops. But it's, I'm gonna find, I'm gonna go use this one. This one has the stain. You can see like there's little, little puddles instead of strokes. And I guess it's called staining from what I understand. But that was the title. So this time around I decided to call it The Umbrella Project because it wasn't just going to be Tori and Los. It just wasn't going to be me and Tori and Chelsea this time. It was going to be this posse of ladies working on it. And the umbrella kind of encapsulated the whole thing. And we were going to make it rain. ta -da! See ya! I thought that was very good. I came up with it all by myself. <laughs> but... Big thing. And, uh, so that, that, that's going to be coming up the end of the, the more I get more confirmations I get, the more I can work on it, which is going to be really exciting. I actually brought one of them with me today. I can't finish it because I have to hear back from some people, but this is one of the ones I'm doing. Um, a Vienna Tang. I'm very, very happy with it. It's going to be this really big, really big undertaking. I'm very excited. Um, complete with historical accurate, historically accurate costume. Alex doesn't know it yet, but he's gonna have 1840s curls and it's gonna be hilarious. He's gonna have like the little cravat and like the waistcoat. It's gonna be great. Um, <laughs> I'm supposed to know laughing. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, he doesn't know it yet. I don't think he'll care. I'll be like, whatever, I'm Alex. It's cool. Um, do you have any questions for me, Michelle? Happy. Happy. Oh, that's the... <laughs> that's not really a question. That's not really it's more a of a statement. It's more yeah, of a very good statement. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of anything I can plug while I'm here. Um, you should plug your website. Oh, that's right. I just gave myself as sort of a gift from me to me. I'm so like Alvin and the Chipmunks. which sounds like in the face at me. Um, I revamped my website. I gave myself my own domain name. This quiet siege dot net. It took me forever to figure out how to spell siege. I'm like, I have a four e except wait, wait, and then like quiet's right before, and I think quiet is spelled. The, I don't know. But yeah, I'm really proud of it. I did the layout all by myself. It was very intimidating. I have no idea what I was doing. I'm like, this kind of... Well, this works. If you click on this, okay. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm really excited. I'm actually going to open it up more as I figure out what I'm, figure out what I'm doing. Um, it all has a blog on it. It's more of a journal, so sometimes I get I talk about a painting or I'm planning to post works in progress. I'm tempted to open up a section about the webcomic my friend Hannah and I are working on Loyalty of Villains. But I don't know if I have enough space to do that. But maybe I can open up one just for Loyalty of Villains. Who knows? I'm still trying to figure out this one that's just for the main art. It's, it's, it's different. It's not the same as, I'm not a very technical person. Again, I failed color theory three times, three and a half times. Um, I don't get a lot of stuff. But yeah, it, you should go look at it and tell me if there's any bugs or anything. Or just look at it and go say hi. I can actually set up my own email through my website. Then I'll have to figure out how to that. Hmm. This is amazing. That caramel vanilla coffee stuff. I uh, see, I'm plugging that. I'm really good at promoting stuff. So So there's a website, there's the umbrella project, there's the caramel fusion vanilla crack stuff. Um oh I have an art show coming up. The date of the art show keeps changing on us, and I've never done an art show. Actually, I did an art showcase, and I was a headliner. 
And I was late for it because I was watching a Tori Amos concert on Facebook. <laughs> That's that. I'm surprised anybody wants to work with me ever again. I post stuff like that. I'm like, I'm gonna be late, guys. What are you doing? Are you still on Bard? I'm watching Tori Amos' free webcast on, on Facebook. I'm gonna be late. We'll just lie and say you got stuck on Bard. Works for me. But if this is my first time showing, and the first one was a showcase and we did live art for people who came in, but this one is an actual gallery showing at San Francisco State, so that'll be really interesting. I think the date for that is November 17th. It's, I forget what it's called. <laughs> I'm terrible plugging things. Um, unless they're that coffee made stuff. Um, basically the theme is Native Americans We Are Not costumes we are not mascots and it's about contemporary usually college age I think Native American artists and it's been a very interesting process but if you're interested I can get more information about that as it as it comes it keeps again the information over the art show keeps changing but hopefully it'll Um, my goal for the next couple years is to show regularly, because I guess that's where the art world really is, is, is showing in, in hip galleries these days, so maybe, maybe I can do something with that. We'll see. Anything else for me, or? Plug is happy, and... Oh. Happy that the see yeah, happiness yeah. is very important. It's important that we're happy. And um, if people want to contact you, oh, if you want to contact me, Facebook. you can actually contact me um, at my website. I actually, I have a list of my I have a listing of my regular email on the about me page. Again, it's this quiet siege dot net. I have a Facebook page for my for my art, just for my art. It's M Pilotti, M period P I L O T T E. See, I spelled my own name right. I can do something. Um, I'm on Twitter, collecting underscore bees. Um, I actually do a I one of those few people who's the post on Life Journal. I have um, collecting bees. One word is my is my username and I often do pretty lengthy art posts. Actually that's usually where I post my in progress pieces. Um, actually there's a, a whole tag on LiveJournal. If you click on watercolor stain collection under the tag you can see the whole process um, right down from the initial emails to the pencil sketches to the paintings themselves and I wrote whole essays about what the paintings meant and that's generally what I use my live journal for is showing people not just like ta-da here it is <laughs> but the whole process I'm doing this because I guess when you scroll you scroll down that's, that's what I'm doing by hand I'm showing you how to scroll clearly <laughs> um, am, I where, am I anywhere else? I, I, if I'm anywhere else, you can probably Google me and find me. So, say hi. Then just say hi, yeah. Um, my email is collectingbees, this quiet siege. My two usernames combined, one word, spelled correctly, thank you, at gmail.com. If you have any other questions or statements or even commissions, I do take commissions too, so... Thank you. What? <laughs> Michelle's doing this little dance on the outside of the camera. It's pretty awesome.